one second. Guys, Mo, We're gonna pick. Andy, Sup, yeah. Jack, Sup, and BK, mm -hmm. thanks all for just coming for this champion's presentation. Yes. He's going to talk about that, I should say, two photon spectroscopy, which oh, is going to yeah. be very relevant thing for this Friday, our workshop at Medical Imaging Center at the University of Toronto. Please listen very carefully, spectacular, especially he's going to talk about the relevance of that technique for imaging the neurons of the brain neuroscience. And, and neuroscience and also talking about Cat. the PET scans also in relation with the detection of the Alzheimer, a kind of a neurological disorder. Are we ready now? Yes. Yeah, super. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Sean. Today I'm going to talk about the two photon microscopy and the one application uh, and the applications in biology and the physics uh, and uh, especially in the neuroscience. So my, my presentation is divided by six parts which are the birth of the microscopy and the invention of the two photon microscopy. Next is the uh, the main part is the theory of the two photon microscopy. Uh, number four is application in biology. And number five is the introduction of neuroscience, which is, uh, uh, which is a pretty popular and, uh, mm, uh, and a new uh, major in the university, the neuroscience. And the last one is the application in physics about the DOI and the PET. So uh, initially, the, the glasses is used to observe the flea. Uh, it's a small insect. It is, so the microscopy is also called the flea glasses. So the first person who invented the microscopy is, is called Jensen. He's a glass maker in, uh, in uh, 1590s. Uh, we, uh, we probably know this person called Levin Hook. He's a scientist. He, he, he firstly invented the, invented the microscope that applies in the science experiments. Yeah, this is a picture of a leather hook. Yeah. So let's see, let's see leather hook's uh, microscopy. It is a pretty simple um, structure. You see there, uh, this is a cotton, a cotton board. It, it has a core. It, which uh, is putting the glass on uh, here. So this this uh, this uh, structure is is to put the um, or to the put the oh. thing that put on this guy. And uh, we uh, we have the light shining toward the the object and to the glass. So so it it shows some uh, uh, it put the object into a small one. So if if there is a big glass, it can put its object smaller than 300 times. If the glass is uh, smaller, such as that size, uh, because of the bigger uh, deflection, so that the high and the higher radius of curvature, the direction will change to a pretty larger one. So in that century, the level hook uses the common sunlight to that applied in the microscope. Sorry, Sean, is it actually the same thing which we just talked about the diffraction of a diffraction? the ages of the RCC? No, 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 not really. The diffraction, not diffraction. Oh, this is the diffraction? Yeah. Okay. So there are three different kinds of microscopy. Uh, the first one is the most uh, uh, common one in the Chinese middle school. It is called the compound mol uh, mol uh, mol monocular microscope. And the uh, next one is the electron microscope, which is the biggest presentation. Uh, we'll talk about this. And the last one is the X-ray microscope. You see the uh, machine is uh, pretty big. It's a pretty sophisticated uh, machine. Yeah, X-ray microscope. And uh, yeah. And you're having it tomorrow, huh? Vicky, are you ready for it? Huh? Yeah, please. <laughs> no, I mean, you like the phone. Yeah. And uh, the... Yeah, who is X-ray microscopy? Oh, this is Andy. And the next, it is my topic. This is the uh, two photon microscopy. You see, this is uh, on the left of the photo is the machine of the microscope. This person is uh, uh, checking the image from the two computers. The left computer shows the light spectrum. You see, from the uh, tiny, uh, 
turn the blue light to the to the red uh, to the red light. The wavelengths are different from uh, probably 300 nanometers to the about 1,000 nanometers. This computer shows the image of the um, object. It has the green light. Yeah. It's called a super microscope. So by using this microscope, people, uh, scientists can observe some uh, small things, like the left one is the mouse intestine. Probably the green light shows the um, shows the nuclei. Yes, yeah, the cell nuclear. Um, the the right one is the fibroblast distribution. From the five. Uh, Nanosecond to one nanosecond, it shows the lifetime from the red light to the dark blue light. And the unit of the light is one millimeter. So what is Sean, what is the lifetime of what? From nanoseconds to one to five nanoseconds? Yeah, so so in this picture, the, they are all about the green green light and the blue light. So it shows the this uh, this uh, sample, the lifetime is about uh, three nanometer, uh, nanoseconds. So, yeah, three nanoseconds. Long. Is it possible that's a lifetime of the radiation, I should say, of the fluorescent, I should say? Yeah, probably the, the fluorescence. Uh, radiation fluorescence. Super, super. Next slide? Yeah. So now, and then we're going to talk about the invention of this uh, microscope. Uh, this picture shows the laser. It's probably used an uh, uh, infrared laser. It's a red laser. So the two photo microscopy uh, was pioneered by these two guys in the Cornell University mm. in the 19th century, uh, 20th century. They combined the idea about uh, this is the basic uh, conception of the two photo absorption with the use of the laser scanner. This is a laser scanner which can shine in the which can shine the laser. In this uh, two photo excitation microscopy, uh, they use the Infrared laser beam is focused through the object lens. And do you have some stuff talk about what is a two photon absorption coming? Yeah, yeah, the next slide I will talk about. It is about the energy level. Energy. This is a video about the basic introduction. You can you see. It. Yeah. It is pretty elaborate. <laughs> Two-photon microscopy is a scanning imaging technique enabling imaging of living biological and tissue samples with high resolution. It works based on fluorescent signals from fluorophores after two-photon excitation by a laser light source. Applications include physiology, neurobiology, embryology, cancer biology, and tissue engineering. Two photons from the excitation light are simultaneously absorbed by the fluorophore within the sample, which there. subsequently enters an excited state. As the fluorophore radiatively relaxes back into ground state, the detected emitted fluorescence light composes the image. As sample excitation relies on the intensity-dependent two-photon absorption process, it is highly localized in the focal region of the excitation light, allowing for high-resolution images. Wavelengths commonly associated include 1064 nanometers and for Thai sapphire lasers between 700 and 1000 nanometers. As specific fluorophores are excited at different wavelengths, the Elix, a tunable Thai sapphire laser, range of 720 to 920 nanometers, is ideally suited, meeting a wide range of fluorophore excitation wavelengths. The helix, with repetition rate of 250 megahertz, is tailored to the decay times of typical fluorophores to reduce photo bleaching and toxicity, and increase imaging speed and cell view times, an extra benefit to advanced time-resolved microscopy techniques like fluorescence lifetime imaging, or FLIM. Its short pulse duration, so 50 femtoseconds, maintains a high efficiency of the process, creating bright images. High-speed imaging is also enabled through resonance scanning technology. Through collaboration with Cambridge, our sister company within Novanta, Laser Quantum offers complete design and manufacture of subsystems, including galvos, for imaging and detecting fluorescence-emitted wavelengths for high-resolution images. For more details, please visit laserquantum.com. Okay, you see this video, uh, it shows the basic uh, mm, 
basic theory of the two photon microscopy. Uh, probably is that the molecule is uh, basically is from the it stays at the non existent states at the ground level. So it, if there is a something, there's an energy, two different uh, uh, fluid uh, kind of energy uh, makes the ex makes this molecule excited to the next level. So it will, mm, or it will have the absorption of the energy. So the that. Also, just uh, that was great, Sean. Do you have something about the resolution of that microscopy, that the thing which you also talked in the class, that you said that the resolution is two, I should say, two packets of that, how they are distinguishable. You have it, huh? Uh, I probably have it. So mm, the basic theory of the two-photon uh, two absorption mm, is the uh, employs the, the energy level. You see, there are three energy levels. The first is augmented state, which is called the ground state. And the next is the virtual state, uh, which is the middle one. Middle one. So, but I think one photon microscope does not have this. Right? Yeah, sure. So, and the, one photon microscope only has three states. So, uh, only has two states, but mine, is, mine has uh, three states, and the last one is the excited state. So, uh, TPA is an uh, absorption of uh, the two photons uh, of the identical or different uh, fluences to, uh, to exactly the molecule from this state to the higher energy level. And uh, by uh, Einstein has already told us the energy equals to F time, uh, H times F, H is the flat constant, and F is the uh, frequency. So um, yeah, uh, the difference between the different energy between the ground state to the excited state uh, is the uh, molecule uh, to the sum of the energies that the two photons absorb. It just stores the energy. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, and, now, and, and next, I want to talk about the lab spectrum. So you see this picture from uh, the wavelength of the energy. This is the wavelength. Uh, no, there's not a wavelength. This is uh, the wavelength of the energy. This is the wavelength. Nanometers. It's Nanometer is the wavelength. That's the wavelength. That's yeah. The, by the light source. So uh, uh, arguably, the, uh, the if two photon microscope, the wavelength is the, the range between the seven. 120 nanometer to 1,000 nanometer. You see, from this, this part, uh, from this, uh, this is a seven nanometers. So it uh, shows the infrared, the uh, infrared laser. So mm, the light between the dark is a purple light to the dark uh, to the red red light is a range of the color. This is it shows the different uh, kinds of colors. It is called the light, uh, light spectrum. Uh, this picture is uh, pretty important because it shows the mm, very major theory of the microscope. You see, uh, the first picture is the one photon microscope. The next is the two photon microscopy. You see, these pi two pictures are pretty similar, but except this part. This part, uh, you see, this part has a, a, a gap, so only one one photon microscope has only two states, uh, but this uh, this microscope has three states. So you see, two uh, photon exact uh, exact excitation of, uh, occurs through the absorption of two lower energy photons. We are short lived uh, intermediate states. Uh, this is a vibrational state, and uh, this is the vibrational relaxation. But uh, but the one photo uh, microscope does not have this guy. You see. So Which one? You mean the vibrational states? Uh, this. Uh, uh, after uh, after either excitation uh, process, the flow the fluorophore relaxes. This is the. Uh, uh, where is the fluorophore? This is the fluorescence uh, emission. Occur, uh, re relaxes uh, the lowest energy level to of the first uh, exact electronic states, 
we are vibrational process. 